But in our zeal, we forget that those souls also can be saved. And they can enjoy the same grace that we are enjoying in the church. There are people who do not take recognition of the grace of God out there. And as much as we want the world to end, that's good. But how do we express our desires for this world to end? By teaching the gospel. By bringing as many souls as we can. Because it's not good for a Christian to think of other people to perish. It's not right. So if really we want the world to end, then we need the gospel to be the light in our path. We need to go out there. We need to preach in a way that has never been done. That's what we need to do. Because then it shows that we want them also to be part of the fold. So let none of us think, okay, they have to be destroyed. They must be destroyed. We are here as the representative of God, isn't it? So we are to intercede for them. We are to pray for them that they repent. And that is the value of souls. Let us not just get excited about this truth and think because we are saved, then we are fine. So we sorrow for losing materialistic things. But when we do, we do not sorrow for sinners. We need to pray for the burden of souls, saints. Do you have a burden for souls? Do you have this heaviness when you see people perishing? Do you delight when you see them perishing? Do you delight when you see them destroying themselves with alcohol and smokes and all these things? Do you delight when you see them being enslaved by false religions? Do you delight in that? If we do not delight in that, I think then it's time to share the gospel. It's time to share the gospel. So we need to have the mindset of Christ. We have to go an extra mile for the salvation of others. Truth that is not lived that is not imparted, loses its life-giving power. To many, truth is a theory. It has no power, it has no life. And we cannot testify to the power of the truth if we are not experiencing it ourselves. It's difficult, it's mere presumption. So in my conclusion, the questions are, are you living the truth that you know? Are you living according to the knowledge that God has given you? That's the question. Look at your life. How much do you know? In fact, these last two weeks we have known a lot, isn't it? And that has given, a bar given us a burden, isn't it? Because now we know. We know what's wrong. We know we cannot do that. So the question is, are you living according to the truth that you know? I believe that each one of us here have some knowledge about truth, isn't it? I mean, we are here. It's true that the Sabbath is the day of worship. So we are coming to rest. We know about that. But when we come to rest, are we also resting our hearts to God? Are we giving up our yoke and asking for God's yoke? For that is easy. Because, you know, coming to the venue is not keeping the Sabbath. In fact, you cannot keep the Sabbath if you have not been working with God during the week. You keep Saturday. Are you keeping Saturday? Or are you keeping Sabbath? The Sabbath is an emblem of the children of God. Amen. It's a mark. And we can only recognize its beauty if we work with God during the week. In our workplace, our mind should always be occupied by the word of God. When we are tempted, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. It has become the motto of my defense. Is that what resonates during the week in your mind? What verse resonates in your mind as a defense from temptation? What are the scripture which you have hid in your heart that when you are tempted to complain, to murmur, or to do certain things come up? The word is a defense. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we need to start keeping the Sabbath, not Saturday. So we need to live according to the truth that we have. Do you have a body for souls is my second question. Because, you know, when you are truly converted, you have a desire to let other people hear about what you know. You cannot keep quiet. You know, they say silence is golden. Let me tell you, it's yellow when things are wrong. It's not golden. It's yellow when things are wrong. My third question, do you understand the value of souls? Do you understand the value of souls? While we were with, with sin, Christ died for our ungodliness. 
So we were also in the same camp. I can remember very well, because it was not long ago, that life of confusion, a life without hope. I look at my neighbors where I live in the morning, they wake up, they do the same thing. No hope. They go buy alcohol Monday to Friday. Sunday has been declared as the national drinking day. Imagine. No hope. That's why they want to run away from their mind. Because there is no hope. So I saw one man reading, my neighbor there, he was reading, of course, a dubious book. So I say, I see you have an interest in reading. Here's a book. See? Because you need to look at those opportunities. We must have an evangelistic mindset. When I see someone reading in the train, in fact, it's a long time that I didn't take a train. But when you see someone reading in the train, you know what? They are seeking for something. They are seeking for God, but they do not know it. It is the perfect opportunity to hand them a book, which is good that you have books when you walk. If you have a car, put some books in your car. Evangelism is not so much about calling the big crowds and all these things. It is about that moment when you encounter someone. It can be a change of one's life in that moment. And when we understand the value of souls, this becomes a solid lifestyle. We, it's, 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 it's effortless. I even forget because it is the life that I now live, which is not mine, but of Christ. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18, When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, and his blood will I require at thy hand. Saints, I know I said a lot of things, and I even forgot some of the points I wanted to emphasize while I was giving my testimonies. But I hope the message that I wanted to deliver today is that, do you have the burden for souls? Yes, you have the knowledge of truth. What about others? What about your surrounding area? We, we, we had a great experience sharing all those things. As I said, the bread is useless with no one to eat it. Do you know the burden that I have for carrying such a message? How I wish that I could have an audience like this of nine Adventists, all of them. You know, I could blame God, but it is also within my reach to do that. Why am I not doing it? Why am I not preaching in the train anymore? This, is a, this message is a rebuke to me also. Don't think I'm saying this because, oh, I've mastered this. I preach more than most of you all. No. I used to preach in the train. I had such zeal and anger for people to see, with the VOP cards everywhere I walked. And people would be blessed. I remember one time I received a big box of small Bibles. Walked into the train in the morning, gave everyone the Bible. Now when I started preaching, everyone was ashamed because I gave them my Bible, so we should now listen. <laughs> Everybody was quiet. And now I gave them the Bible, so they had references. Why am I not doing that anymore? Have I now become an elect? that I should not share the gospel with the poor. It is, it is such things that troubles me at times. So please do understand that, saints, we are in the same boat. But I think it's time to awaken. It's time to pray for a revival in our own lives, that we may share this eternal gospel. And sometimes maybe you're not sharing the gospel because you don't believe anything the gospel says. You are stuck in a ritual. Pray, pray fervently that you escape the ritual of coming to church, keeping Saturday. You need to keep the Sabbath. You need to live according to all the truth that has been delivered unto you. So may God bless you and awaken you to the realization of these powerful messages. I'm yet still excited for these messages and I'm impressed. I don't know about you who have been here for 15 years or 10 years or even more. Do you still get revived? Do you still experience the bliss of this message? I hope you do. God bless you. Let us pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I have said a lot of things. And God, I pray that you make them straight. Take this message to the heart of your children. And forgive me of my sins. And forgive the church of their sins, not to take their authority. For you have said, all power is given unto you, O Lord Jesus Christ. 
And go ye therefore and preach unto all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So that was not a suggestion, it is a command which we fail and tremble upon day by day. God help us. We need you, Lord. We need you, God. May you touch the heart of every one that listened to the sermon, including my own, that we may be revived, that we may come to the knowledge of you and live according to the truth. Put a burden of souls in our hearts and bless each one of us as we proceed with this Sabbath. And may you give us joy as we shall partake together, commune, Father God, with the physical food, and may you give us joy and share together and sharpen each other, Lord Almighty God, as we grow in grace and as we grow in faith. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs>